Hello you peeps, this is Edo here for another Let's Play of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Here with me is Nightshade. Our goose is cooked and the goose is called Maya. <laughs> I know, we are, ugh, we're not in a good situation right here. So let's go ahead and continue. We're investigating. Oh boy. March 22, release date of Rune Factory 5 by the way. 5.24 p.m. Raiden Co. Law Offices. Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Uh, there, there, Pearls. I... I can't take it anymore! Ah! Look, it, it'll be alright. Uh, everything may still work out. Hmm? The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't, because Mr. On Guard hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. <laughs> Cheer up. We don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. Aw, oh, poor Pearl. <laughs> You're right. Miss Maya is in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So... Hey, you guys. Glad I caught you, pal. Mr. Scruffy Detective? Oh boy. Looks like Detective Gumshoe has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. <laughs> it's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now, and I came to talk to you, pal. Ooh. But we're kind of busy right now. <laughs> Great. So, what are you going to do from now on? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So, do you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that! <laughs> uh, what am I supposed to do now, pal? I... I don't have anything coming in at all until my next payday! What are you talking about? You don't have another payday? I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work here at your place, pal! Say what?! <laughs> You'll be searching for things that will prove Mr. Handguard's innocence all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm going to help you, pal. I've got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. And I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let, let's let Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Uh, okay. By the way... What's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. Of course. <laughs> Why am I surrounded by people who only eat cheap, unhealthy foods? Have you seen my celery? <laughs> that was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Hedgeward act like that. Never thought he'll say something like, he didn't care if Miss Andrews killed herself. Uh, he said that? That's horrible! But because of him doing that, we got the truth, finally. The truth. Miss Andrew's last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in her testimony herself. But, I still think there is something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. You mean about that thing, pal? Why would she want to... No, I mean almost need to frame Mr. Ungard. I couldn't figure that out from anything she said all day. Mm. Then... Then you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie per se. It just feels like there's more here than meets the eye. Transformers? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Or that's what Edward would like us to believe. Th that's such a dirty trick. Even that woman prosecutor was better than that. Oh, Francisca von Karma. Speaking of Miss von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Miss von Karma was shot today on the way to the trial by a pistol, pal. B but she's going to be fine, right? I mean, Edward said she was in stable condition, but... 
Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. Unfortunately, it's not her whipping shoulder, so that means she can still do that. That's what I was about to say. I'm like, uh, that's still not a good place to get <laughs> shot, but... They she'll be done taking the bullet out, so she's probably resting at the hospital. That means the metal detector ain't gonna work on her. Which one? What? Are you going to visit her, pal? N no. Well, I was kind of thinking about it. Hey, you're actually a good at heart, don't ya? What do you mean? <laughs> she looked like she was being tortured to death not being able to go to the trial today. So maybe it'll be good for her if you went and let her whip you for a bit, pal. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick. Oh god, Pearly, no. <laughs> now I'm definitely not going. <laughs> um, let's see. The name of the hospital. Oh yeah, the Hotty Clinic. Oh, for real? That name sends a chill down my spine. Well, I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. And I think that's what we're gonna do. Wait, 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 wait. March 22, Hottie Clinic, reception. Oh, boy. Never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Hmm, yeah. Are you here to visit a patient? Hmm. <laughs> No, I remember why I hate this place. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, mm. hi. Wait a second. You're... <laughs> yes, I'm Director Hardy. No, no. Oh. Why are you still here? <laughs> yes, what is it? <laughs> can I help you? You can help me. <laughs> yes. Director Hardy. Oh, it's Edgeworth. <laughs> Whoa. Edgeworth. <laughs> yes, I'm Director Hardy. No, oh, no. He doesn't really believe that, does he? Oh, you're the man from this morning. Mm, yes, what is it? Uh -huh. Director, Francisca, how is Francisca von Karma? Mm, you don't need to worry. Mm, yes, she's in good hands. Because, you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> mm, yes. And that thing, that surgery, it went well. You have my gratitude. Does he really believe this? I... Edward, are you really that dense? <laughs> oh my god. Look, uh, you fell for it too before. It looks like Edward doesn't know about this director and his secret. <laughs> she looks so pitiful. Absolutely terrified. Mm, yes. But I understand. Mm, yes, our opponent was a gun after all. Mm, um. Her opponent? <laughs> what? Was she trying to beat the gun? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. And when I snuck on her real sick of light, she will scream really loud. Mm, oh, yes. uh, no. I see. Ah, but she's really cute. Too. When I do that, she'll whip me up with her whip. Uh huh. Boy, did I cry like a baby. Mm, yes, but I think I could get used to it. Mm. <laughs> oh. Oh, there she is. Go back to your room. You're so mean. <laughs> so mean, my frisk frisk. But that's good. <laughs> ah! Okay, okay. Mm, yes, uh, all time to for my high reach reps. Mm, yes. She sounds okay. And what are those tulips doing in your hands, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Ah! I knew I shouldn't have come here. <laughs> oh, great. We gotta talk to her. But, hold on. Um, burning in my nose! <laughs> I wanted to sneeze and I couldn't sneeze. Uh-huh. I was shot in front of the courthouse in my right shoulder. <laughs> but it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. I've even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. <gasps> but, but that would have been too much for you. There's no need to act tough in front of us, you know. Regardless, I was dragged here by that man over there. He was so unyielding. One has to wonder if he was simply interested in stealing my case. It was the only logical course of action, given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. 
But by taking over the case, I found myself having to clean up after you and that irresponsible deal you made. <gasps> dun dun dun. I think I know what deal he's referring to. <laughs> the deal. <laughs> Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. On Guard, you told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof that I made such a deal? Y you're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If I had been in court today, this trial would have been would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem, whether she had tampered with the evidence or not. I have only one objective, to find Ungard guilty of murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The end justifies the means. Miss Von Karma. Adrian Andrews believed you when you said if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then Ungard will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she is now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was... Ow! <laughs> I think visiting hours here are about over. So if you'll excuse me. What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in that argument. <laughs> Edgeworth. <laughs> Always with the pissy face. <laughs> That's his natural state of being. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Andrews' condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far? Uh, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right. The courtroom is a garden of judgment. I am putting myself on the line when I stand in there. And that's why I made a witness do the same. It's only natural. By the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Witness that card. Give it to me, Hari. Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This, I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. That card. What in the world is it? You mean this? Listen, right. This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. A special investigation team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. I, I understand. Their task is to find the owner of this card. A man named Shelly the Killer. And just as his name states, he is a killer. An assassin. The best at that. An assassin? Oh boy. Oops, I went too far. So who is this Shelly the Killer? The Killer is the name of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing? The name first appeared about a hundred years ago, I hear. Shelly is the professional name of the third heir to the De Killer name. So because his professional name is Shelly, he leaves cards with a shell on them? He has a habit of making sure to leave his, a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it is part of his duty to his clients. His duty? If he leaves a card... Then his clients can be assured it was he who killed the victim. And also serves as insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. 
And the killer values the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even honorable assassin can exist. So you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it. Wouldn't you agree? Shelly the killer, huh? I noticed something at the trial today. You are behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess I should just tell him. Maya. She's been kidnapped. K kidnapped? What does this kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. <gasps> really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Uh, Mr. Edward, he's going to- Stop trying to console me, Edward. I don't need your pity. Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. We don't even have a single lead to go on. There's only one way to save her. I- I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right, listen. You need to know something. Juan Corrida was killed by Shelley the Killer. And the client who ordered the job is Matt Ungard, your own client. Please stop. I, I can't listen to you. I, I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you will need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only, as we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelley the Killer. But if you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. Oh. In any case, I must attend to the preparations of for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again, if anything should happen. Now, if you'll excuse me. <sighs> Mr. Nick, do you, do you think Mr. Ongar hired an assassin? No way. I mean, he doesn't have a psych lock. Yeah, I, I guess not. Maya, please, all I ask is you make it home. Safe and sound. Oh. oh date, date unknown, time unknown, location undisclosed. I'm assuming I'm here. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even though he said he was an assassin, I bet he's just making that up. Like how Nick does with everything in court. Thanks, Maya. <laughs> Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. Oh. It sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. Oh, jeez. Date unknown. Tame unknown. Location undisclosed, but different. Whoa. What is this place? got a feeling I'm not in a hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way I can show them to Sis and maybe get out of here. Oh, that's actually a good point. There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, looks like something's written here. Let's see. I think it says with love. Celeste. I bet this could be a clue. Is this the girl that, uh... Yup. Yeah, okay, alright. Wow. So there's obviously a motive for him to do this. That's weird. What's a figurine doing on the sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Ah! How cute! But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. And now for puzzle number 006. Oh, hey, it's a computer. I've never really used one before. Um, 
I have no idea where the power switch on this thing is. Drat. There goes my plan to use this somehow to get out of here. She's not technologically savvy, it seems. Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before. Now where's the power button? Hmm. Whew, it's busted. I would so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Ah! I can't believe I just made a joke about dying, all things considered. What is this thing? An antenna, I guess? And this is a VCR? I sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here, but what is an antenna doing here? It's so dark in here that I can barely see, but these kind of feel like videotapes. All of them. Just what kind of room is this? Ugh, locked, of course. It doesn't look like I can use the card to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through here. Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. <laughs> it seems... That your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I will suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways? You mean... Dead men tells no tales, is how the saying goes, correct? Dead? I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting. I am an assassin. N no way! You're lying! I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. Nick! Oh great, now we're back here. March 22, 7.04 p.m., Hottie Clinic, reception, nothing happened. Mr. Nick? Hmm? Uh, oh, yes. Pearls? Got caught up in my thoughts about Maya's situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know. I guess for now I have no choice but to believe in Mr. On Guard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. All right. Let's get going, too. Okay. Uh, so I guess I go here. Uh, Bye, pal. And Bye, pal. Go. I mean, I guess if we need to talk to him, he should be here. March 22, detention center, visitor's room. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Uh, aw. Uh, I have too many questions I need to ask. I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... Or Mr. Phoenix Wright, you say? Oh, yeah, there's a message here for you. A message? It's from Matt on guard. Ah, here you are. What did he write? Is it something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. To Mr. Lawyer Dude, I've got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Right Dude. So, actually, I have a favor to ask of you, dude. I have this cat named Shu. I didn't put up a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed Shu for me, dude? That place is his house, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, my house is just a I'm little ways about. down from the hotel, alright? God dang it! This is terrible! Let's hurry! We have to feed his cat! I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Yeah, I guess. Please feed my cat Shu. A client's request is a request. Guess I should go check up on his cat. Uh, where do I go? Do I go back here? You have to go to the hotel to get to the place. Oh, okay. The oh. Well. <laughs> March 22, Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. 
All right now, Mr. Nick. Let's go look for clues. We have to, for Mystic Maya's sake. You shall not pass. Oh, God. Yeah. Miss Olbeg. Don't devalue my name and turn it into a gas for you, spiky-headed pettifogger. Because of you, I've been named to look like the bad guy again. Although, I did get a piece of gum from Edgy Boy. Just as he promised, but what I really wanted was something much more valuable. I wanted Edgy Boy's heart. I wanted it all for me. It's all your fault. You've awakened the wild beast inside of this old later. Ah! And then, oh, she died? <laughs> ah! This old bag! Keep your hands off me. This helmet is airtight. No air gets in and no air gets out. Um, then why do you keep putting it on? Hmm. Don't think you can get me to move with silly questions. You're going to have to defeat me if you want to get by. I'm not hearing this. Nah. Yeah, let's deal with you later. <laughs> get out of here. March 22, Engard Mansion, living room. Hmm. Sure is dark. I'll go turn on a light. There it is. Wow, so this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's find Shu, the kitty cat. <laughs> Shu! Oh, I meowed! <laughs> so I guess this is Shu. Oh, what a lovely cat. Hello, Shu. Tee-hee. <laughs> the cat seems to like pearls. Pardon me. May I help you with something, mister? Oh, uh, we're lawyers. Actually, I'm Mr. Ungard's lawyer. The masters. <laughs> then you must be Mr. Wright. I yes. Ah, it's a pleasure to meet you, wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. Of course. Nice to meet you. Freaking cat. I guess I gotta talk to you. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. On Guard, right? Honestly, sir, I don't believe my master is capable of such a full deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm, how typically butler-like, as it were. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I will have to say maybe about one year. Hmm. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of himself and his affairs. You know, I would have thought Mr. Ungard, the kind... To have a maid over a butler. Our doors are in the other room, sir. That's a very cute cat you've got here. It is my duty to take care of him. The master bought a fancy shoe. And, uh, anything else? <laughs> no, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the family cat. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? Well then, I guess I don't need this piece of scrap paper anymore. Matt's notes crumple and tossed away. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Ah, uh, so young yet already so accomplished, a master of law. But there is also a lot to be proud of in being a butler in charge of the house and all. Thank you for the compliments, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me... Cat. <laughs> and please stay away from the orange door. That's the entrance to the bat cave. A giant bicycle is flying through the air. That bicycle, Pearls, is one where you don't have to pedal, and it moves on its own. Wow! I'm sorry to disappoint you. It can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. 
It's probably also going to make a lot of damage as one of those wire breaks. That's what I was going to say. I'm like, how the heck is it? Like, that's got to be strong-ass wiring that's holding it up. Well, not just the wiring. Whatever's holding it on the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, there are masks here. Yeah, that one in the middle is the Steel Samurai. The ones next to it are the Pink Princess and the Evil Magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo-Old Tokyo. Well, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. <sighs> I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. Oh, it was your client, so I can't necessarily be too upset about that. It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ah, uh, what is with me and feeling inferior today? Hmm? Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. Hearth? Is that how I would say that? That's Maybe. actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before. Come to think of it. You should come and visit Faye Manor then. I'll show you one when you do. Will that actually ever happen? Maybe. Mamba. Mamba. Uh, right here. Oh. There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off over there, Mr. Nick. Yes, pearls. <laughs> now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. All right, here we go. There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick. I bet it's for Mr. Ungard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoot. The door. It's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep nosy people like me from entering it. Oh, that's it, huh? I can't... Mm -hmm. nothing else? Mm -hmm. Oh, oops, I pushed the wrong button. Uh, back. Uh, move. So we're going back here. Oh. Uh... Well. the show her? Oh, great. Oh, boy. Um. <laughs> That's about right. Ha! Your million light years too early to be asking me questions, Vapor Snapper. Arg, looks like the only way I'm going to get any investigation, investigating done, is to first do something about this kooky alien. Um. Oh, same thing. Okay, yeah. So I probably have to present the. this. Hmm. Maybe if I show her this letter I got from Edgeworth. Um, Miss Olbag, if you would look at... What? You want me to look at this worthless piece of... Edgy poo. <laughs> Ugh, is that her perfume from the more I smell? Blah. Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to conduct his investigation? Yours truly, Miles Edgeworth. Yours truly? Hm, that man's good at flattery. Fine, but only because Edgy Poo said so, you understand? <sighs> well. I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad and I won't let you off the hook. It looks like she had strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing's going to come of it. <laughs> <gasps> That's so mean, Mr. Nick! Feelings are meant to be told and shared. Ow. <laughs> Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. She smacked him! She just smacked. <laughs> she jumped and then she smacked. <laughs> I know, because like, she's, she's got to wonder how tall she is. Um, so anyway, let's continue our investigation. Okay. Oh, God. And she's back. Ugh, what? What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go into Ungard's room today. Why? The police main investigation team is going to be in there all day, you hear? I wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. So don't go ahead. 
in there. Set one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of Wendy Old Bag. Oh, oh boy. Um, do I need to examine these again? Or is it going to be the same stuff? I mean, you can. I don't know if there's anything of relevance here. I think this is like... I mean... I mean, it's but, new because you've learned new information, yes. I guess, but yeah. We, oops, wrong button. Again. And. Choo! Choo! I told you I wanted to sneeze so dang badly. And now um, you finally let it out of your system. It's like, thank the Lord. Um, I guess. Uh, I guess I go here? This is like the only place I can think of. March 22, Gatewater Hotel, the Viola Hall. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Probably because the police team is scouring for clues about the killer. Uh, Are you hungry? I'm always hungry. That's a mood. Hallway. Let's see if the hallway has anything. March 22nd. Gatewater Hotel, Alway. Hey, city boy! Uh, Lotta, you're still here. Reckon course. Investigative photographer eats or starves on her ability to snap up the scoop yet. And this hotel just has that aura of mystery. You know, like something's always about to happen. But do you have a camera? Right, given. Photographers gotta have cameras out the ear like corn to be a real pro, you know. So I'm hanging around here. Uh, speaking of cameras and feet in the mouth, do you have mine, you bread thief? Why can't you drop that thief thing already? Um, you're getting all the hits today. Would I have to do that? Like, I mean, you can talk to her. Yeah, I guess I'd do that. <clears throat> I want to ask you about the night of the murder. What? You're really gonna shell out the bugs for the info I got? Lada, you were loitering in this hallway the night of the murder, were you not? Well, kinda, but... Brace yourself, Phoenix. Here it comes. I didn't exactly hang around here the entire time, you know. Followed a few stars around. Got a few autographs. Shook a few hands. Had a soda pop with a few of them, too. Looks like she wasn't here the entire time that night. The security lady also wasn't in this hallway the whole time either. I guess this means there's no one who could tell us who came in and went that night. So, about the note that was inside your camera case. Oh, that dirty ditty I wrote. Yeah, uh, can I believe what you've written? You mean the stuff about Ungar shoving his manager lady onto Corda? Yeah. Well, I reckon you best not be believing that. What? Look, I sort of wrote that on a whim, you know? Writing whatever came to mind. Whatever came to mind? Yeah, when you get down to it, it's just a lot of random bull dooters. Like most of the stuff you say. Uh. Hey, what's with ya? Why are you staring at me like my grandpa used to? Hmm. Hey, why do you look like you suddenly got older, too? Or am I just shrinking here? Um... Ah, my baby! My $1,600 baby! What's with that red-coated prosecutor, anyhow? The guy told me it was evidence and refused to give it back to me. Well, that's kinda how it is. Hey, hey, you're that red coat's friend, ain't ya? So put in a few good words for me and get me back my camera. You want me to do what? Listen, nag the guy real good for about five hours and I guarantee he'll give back. Why don't you do your own dirty work? Well, I reckon it's time for me to get going. A tabloid photographer without a camera is just a tabloid, huh? Um, yeah, I guess so. Keep yourself together out there, you hear? I'm coming to see you in court tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'll see you then. And you too there, little one. Keep up the good work, okay? Okay. Don't be picky about your food now. Okay. <laughs> and make sure you do all your homework, you hear? Okay. 
Hey! <laughs> if you happen to find yourself a camera, make sure you bring your... Would you please just leave already? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Can we move into... Oh, we can. Let's go in here. March 22, Gatewater Hotel, Corrida's Hotel Room. Oh, I just realized. Mr. Nick! Well, what is that otherworldly ghastly moaning? I don't think it's a ghost. Maybe it's a demon. <laughs> Excuse me. What are you calling a demon brat? Ah! Zoinks, it's an alien. <laughs> Who are you calling an alien? <laughs> oh, it's just you, Miss Olbag. What are you doing here? What is wrong with youngins today? I came down here to pay my respects to my poor Juan, and you're disturbing me. Uh, I don't want to know. Please talk to me about the night of the murder just one more time. I talked about it plenty at the trial. I was fooled, tricked, deceived by that fraud of a photographer and her note. She was loitering around here with that imbecile look on her face. With that imbecilic look on her face? Okay, got it. Good work, Belle. Now, You've got better at writing. <laughs> now hold on a second there, you little pipsqueak. If you're going to take notes, at least make it sound better than that. Oh, all right. Now I've seen everything. But you know, I was working that night too, doing my job, minding my own business. So it's not like I had time to waste standing around here the whole night. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit more about Mr. Corrida. He was the most popular star, you know, especially where it counts in my book. But I heard he was lagging behind in the polls against Mr. On Guard. Ooh. Well, that's just a recent thing, bad luck and all that, you know. But he was going to become even bigger star than he used to be. Look, just look at this mountain of presents. It's a show of the mountain of feelings all his fans had for him. Yeah, the mountain is pretty big. It's certainly nothing to shake a stick at. Mr. Nick? Hmm? What is it, Pearls? The presents. They're all bears, right? She's got a point. There isn't a single thing here that isn't a bear. All of Mr. Corrida's presents from his fans seem to be bears. Oh, that's because you can't think of one without thinking about bears. Bears? Why bears? You don't know. When my dear Juan was training, he fought bare-handed with the bear. What? <laughs> he refused to give in and let the bear win, but after the fight, they became friends. Wow, what a heartwarming story. More like a whole, whole load of whole honky. <laughs> right? Look, it's just like in those young people's dramas. I can see those two talking out down by a river going, <laughs> You, you sure can fight. You too, bub, you too. Did all that really happen? It's in his biography, but What a load of crock. So ever since then, fans have been giving him bears as presents. Yeah, nice bears. Whoa! <laughs> I vote for bears, and I say it's barely eight o'clock. What is that infernal racket? It's one of the presents coming off. Sounds like it's already eight p.m. Way past your bedtime. Uh, that startled me. I, thought I was going to die for a second. Okay, but bear with me. Eight? No. <laughs> so bad. 8 p.m. That's the time when the award ceremony ended that night, remember? Time sure flies. Hard to believe it's been two days since the ceremony. <gasps> Speaking of... The transceiver. Hello? Hello? This is not a phone. 
Maya, how is Maya? You haven't hurt her, have you? Seems you were not able to fulfill your end of the bargain, Mr. Attorney. I have heard the news. It will be my present did you no good. No, no, Mystic Maya, Mystic Maya! One more day, please. All I ask is for one more day. That I is a terrible comic story. I get a not guilty verdict for sure this time, please. I suppose if I must. I need an acquittal more than anything else after all. Please, please let Maya say something. I want to hear she's alright. Alright. That is... What is with the static all of a sudden? Hello? Hello? Damn it. Did the transfuser just suddenly break? Do you think it was because he was in that room where that satellite was? What happened? I don't know. All of a sudden it became nothing but static. Huh? Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Why did the transceiver suddenly break like that? We should probably have an electronics expert look at it. The sooner the better. Oh, uh, I guess we I guess we get out of here. No, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> or do you? No. <laughs> I guess here, nothing. You think you can escape, old bag? Um, oh, okay, I guess this is where I'm supposed to go. March 22, Raiden Co. Law Offices. Oh, Gumshoe! Hey, welcome back, pal. Thought I'll make you a little something for dinner. Th that's nice, thanks. A rich man's luxurious full course meal out of a can, that is. I'm sorry you went through all the trouble to cook, but I don't have time to eat. Oops. Looks like you don't have a can opener, pal. You've got to be kidding. And here I thought he had already whipped something up. Oh, I know. There is one way I know how to be helpful. Ask me about anything you want, pal. Go ahead. Well, since he's here and offering, I wonder what I should try asking him about. Uh, we gotta present that transceiver. The transceiver? Oh, Mr. Nick, you should ask Mr. Scruffy Detective about that thing. What thing? Oh yeah, this thing just up and broke all of a sudden. It... it broke, pal? When I was talking to the kidnapper, it just suddenly broke into static. Look, it sounded like this. I don't hear any static, pal. Huh? Maybe it fixed itself? Did you turn That's it strange. off and on? I'm sure it was making a loud static noise. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe what? Maybe it was electromagnetic interference, pal. Electromagnetic interference? He actually is sounding smart for once? <laughs> what is this world? Um, so what is electromagnetic interference? It's something that happens when a radio wave gets mixed up with another signal, pal. Oh, and you put it that way. I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> Poor pearls. Like, for example, when a cell phone goes off next to a computer screen, the stuff on the screen gets kind of fuzzy and starts acting funny, right? Computer? Hmm. Um, it's like when you use the dryer next to the TV and the screen starts looking weird. Oh, yes, the TV does do that. Hmm. Oh, so that's what you're talking about. She seems amazingly happy at being able to understand this. <laughs> so the room you were in when that interference to the transceiver happened... There's got to be something there that's sending out very strong radio waves, pal. Um... Something like... Hmm, like a listening device or something. Ah! 
Hey, speaking of that, where were you when it happened? We were in Mr. Corrida's room, the scene of the murder. What? That's it. I'm going to sneak into the precinct and get a box sweeper. I'll meet you at the crime scene later. All right, pal? Uh, w wait, Gumshoe. Oh, yeah, baby. It's investigating time. <laughs> I'm on fire, pal. My fingers are hitching to go. Yeah! <laughs> oh, Gumshoe. We should be going too, Mr. Nick. All right, let's go. Uh, no, 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 no. We gotta go through this whole thing all over again. Holy moly, there's too many paths. March 22, Gatewater Hotel, Corridas Hotel Room. Hey, you're finally here, pal. S sorry to keep you waiting. You have the, um, bug sweeper? Um, well, you see... I got busted trying to sneak in, pal, and then suddenly I'm staring at the precinct doors. From the outside, I mean. So yeah, I couldn't get one of the police bug sweepers. What do you mean you couldn't get one? We need that item! Hey, 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 calm down, pal. I didn't say I didn't get one. Just not the police. Ooh. Gumshoe being a little bit illegal. <laughs> wow! So this is a bug sweeper. It looks a little broken. Hey, this was made when I was in elementary school, pal. Oh? By who? Me, of course! Ah, seeing this sure brings back memories. Oh. <laughs> hey, don't you look down on it, pal! Sure, it looks a little beat up! But I put my heart and soul into building this puppy here. How is it that he wanted to be a detective <laughs> when he probably could have got into mechanics? <laughs> don't you start with me. Your heart and soul? It'll work. Trust me, pal. It'll do the job. But... But... But you can't send the sense... You can't set the sensitivity. So it's going to beep at anything that gives off electromagnetic waves. Also, it might explode, so you might want to take some distance. <laughs> but isn't it better that way? <laughs> well, anyway, since I brought it all this way, might as well give it a whirl, right, pal? I'm getting that sinking feeling again. <laughs> okay, now I'll tell you how to use this baby. Oh no. There's a listening device or some other sort of bug in, in this room, pal. So we're going to find it, right? Right. Now, first, let's turn the sweeper on. Next, move the sweeper around to give the room a real thorough looky-see, pal. The sweeper will let you know how strong of a signal it's picking up, so keep an eye on it, okay? Once you find something that's giving off a lot of radio waves, press the <laughs> button to lock onto it. The <laughs> button? Is that what you're <laughs> The <laughs> button. There's a lot of things here that's going to give off radio waves. So let's take a good look at anything and everything that seems suspicious, okay, pal? Alright, I'm going to go stand outside and keep an eye out. Give me a yell if you find a bug. Got it, pal? Oh. Okay, so that's the lamp check, listening device, nope. There are a lot of lamps in this room, aren't there, Mr. Nick? Yeah. And they're all on. You shouldn't do that, Mr. Nick. Don't you know that's wasteful? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll be more conscientious from now on. Sorry. That's the TV. We have that. You mean the radio emits radio waves? What? Oh, I have to push. Oh, okay. That's what I have to push. Okay. Obviously, there's these... Oh wow, how weird. I couldn't like I couldn't do you see how it blocks me at the Yeah, that's, that's so because weird. that's because the slide thing. Also there's a rice cooker here. The coffee machine. Oh, what? This is 
This is just a giant stuffed teddy bear, right? It's the biggest one I've ever seen. Hey, so did you guys find it yet? The listening device, I mean. No, not yet. But this bear's eye is... Let's see. Let's see. Perfectly normal stuffed bear with some really strong radio waves. Sounds like you found the device to me, pal. Let's take this big fella's eye out and see what we've got. You. <laughs> no, you can't. Such, such a violent act. <laughs> Knife out. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and thus Pearl was traumatized for the rest of her life. Hmm. Oh, it's th th that's. It's a miniature camera, and it looks like there's more. It's it's, a, it's the nozzle. <laughs> There's a transmitter and a timer. A what a what a mitter? <laughs> a transmitter, pal. Oh, is this more of that high tech stuff? Uh, what do I do now? Do I just talk? Yeah, okay. So this tiny thing is a camera? Yep, it's a pinhole CCD camera, pal. Why is he a detective? <laughs> Why is he not into mechanics, dude? I don't get it. Electronics, could, first he, of all. He could have a fulfilling life in electronics. <laughs> like It's a small, high-grade video camera mostly used in security <laughs> systems. I can, I can picture Gumshoe owning his own electronics store. He could be like a repairer or something. <laughs> he would probably make so much more money than he does as a detective. So it's a video camera. <laughs> it runs on a battery, which comes with it in a set. But there's no videotape in this camera. This is only the camera part here, pal. A tape recorder with a tape inside is somewhere else. Somewhere else? The footage is changed into radio waves and then it's sent to that recorder. So it's sort of like a TV broadcast, isn't it? Hey, you know, you're right. Have a candy. <laughs> Set to record the victim's room from 8 p.m. for one hour was running a time of murder. <gasps> ding, 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 ding. So, what is a transmitter? It's a device that sends the footage the camera took to a specific destination. It's like a video version of a listening device, pal. It looks like it's attached to a small clock-like thing. Oh, that's a timer, pal. You can set it to turn the camera on and record at a certain time with it. You can set it for a certain time? Yep. Let's see. This looks like it was set to start at 8 p.m. and go for one hour. 8 p.m.? That was the time the award ceremony ended. There's no date set, so it's been recording every night, I'll guess. Mr. Detective, how long has this bear been here? Um, I'm pretty sure it's been here since the night of the murder. Then, then maybe... Maybe this camera caught the murder on tape! What? And if you think about the angle the bear is at... <coughs> it's bound to have had a clear shot of the wall crime, pal. That's true. It's at a really good spot. So there was a camera in this bear's eye. And it was disguised as a present. Oh, that's a good point. And I'm sure it was here on the night of the murder, pal. It's pretty big, so it stands out pretty well in my mind. But who gave Mr. Corrida this present? I... Uh don't know, pal. But! This means that someone out there got a video of what happened here that night. Isn't there any way we can find out who that person is? It's impossible, pal. Radio waves can be sent almost anywhere, so there's no real way to find out. Oh. Is there really no way to find out? I got it! What? 
Hey, pal, let me borrow this media camera for a bit. What are you going to do? I'm going to go around the electronic shops and see if I can find out who bought this. That's actually a, a very logical... Wow. What is going on here? <laughs> I have never seen this side of Gumshoe before. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> but, but that's impossible. I mean, it's already 9 p.m. Leave it to me. Even if I have to search all night, I'll find your man, pal. Given to Detective Gumshoe. Oh, yeah, baby. It's <laughs> investigating time. So when it comes to electronics, he'll be all over this. <laughs> Is that what he needs to be? He needs to be... There's a particular thing where people do that, actually. What I'm on call? fire, pal. My fingers are hitching to go. I'm sure there are, like, special detectives that specialize in, like, actual things like that. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, your bad? We do. We just. We just figured out <laughs> Gumshoe's true potential. He's gone. Yeah. But Mr. Scruffy Detective sure is a nice man. He's pushing himself so hard, all for Mystic Maya's sake. It's a mystery how you always manage to do things in the most inefficient ways, right? Ah! I'm assuming it's. Ah, oh, of course. <laughs> Fudge. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I heard your conversation just now. E Edgeworth, what are you doing here? A rescue team has been created and deployed. I can't say I'm optimistic. We have to move forward one step at a time. I am not used to this heroic song that Edgeworth has right now. But is it a Pokemon rescue team? And if that's just... the case, is it the red rescue team or the blue rescue teams? I need to know. No. Well, probably red in his case. That's well, true. If, if he's the one, yeah. I see. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. We still have to find her. Hmm. So, there was a spy camera hidden inside this stuffed animal, huh? You're one lucky man, right? Huh? Do you know the stuff there, little girl? Um, I have no idea! <laughs> of course not. The maker of this bear is a very expensive luxury brand from overseas. It's completely handmade, and only a small number of these are exported here. What? The camera and transmitter that Scatterbrain Detective took with him are dead ends. Things like those can be bought anywhere. However, this bear is different. By tracking how it got into this country, this bear can tell us who the buyer is. Can you really do that? Mr. Nick, can he really? Well, I guess so. Hmm, it's 9 p.m. I think I can still make it in time. I'll be taking this for- How is he- Really? You're gonna take that big-ass bear? Look, <laughs> I want to see this! <laughs> you, just gotta, you, just gotta, you can draw it. I want to see this. You can draw it yourself. Uh, no, I want to see him pick up this six-foot-looking bear. <laughs> draw it. I'm sure you have other things you have to do. Stuff bear snatch. He snatched it. He grabbed it. <laughs> this is what I wanted to see, dude. <laughs> see you soon, right? And there he goes away with a bear on his shoulder. Wait. What? Can't you see I'm holding a bear? <laughs> this bear is extremely <laughs> heavy. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I have no interest in explaining myself to someone who cannot comprehend. But besides that, right? Until court reconvenes tomorrow, you should concern yourself with this question. Who was the person that murdered Juan Corrida? The real killer? Do you really still think it was Adrian Andrews? To be honest, I don't know anymore. You still have a little time left. Find the truth, right? Everything begins with the truth. Juan Cordes, real killer. Sandra's past. 
The kidnapper whose sole condition is an acquittal for Mr. On Guard. And this card, Shelley the Killer. Maya, the only way I can save you now is to find all the answers to this case tonight. Don't understand what your real intentions are, Edgeworth. But as you said, all I can do for now is find the truth. Uh, to be continued. Yeah. Oh no. Um, uh, are we doing more investigation? There or will be more investigation. Yes. Alrighty then. Okie doke. Uh, and in the next episode, we will do more investigation and see if we can find out what's really going on. I kind of have a sneaking suspicion, but it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so this was Phoenix, right? It's Trinity, just as of all, with me, Edo, and Nightshade. I got nothing but good feelings about all this. And with that, we are out of here. <laughs>